Hey guys, I got a quick Godot tutorial for you on uh, how to create a uh, a bubble shader. It's kind of like a um, light passing through, like a glass. So give it a little refraction effect. So first, we're going to go through and uh, show how to create all the assets for that as a first tutorial. On the second part, we're going to show how to use that in Godot from those created assets, and uh, we'll create a shader, all sorts of cool stuff. So, all right, let's get going. All right, so let's start out by just talking about what is this? Like, why? What even are we trying to simulate? So, refraction um, is basically the bending of light through a medium. What happens with light? It's pretty peculiar. I mean, as it is, it's, it has a universal speed limit, as you may know. But when it travels through a medium, it bounces around, and actually slows down. And the effect of that through different mediums um, will actually change the angle. As you can see here, Snell's law is a perfect uh, way to simplify this uh, interaction. And if you look on Wikipedia, you can kind of read about it and see what happens and how it was derived. And anyway, we won't, we won't go too deep into that, but uh, it's good to know what it is that even happens here. Maybe if you go especially into the 3D uh, games, you have to simulate something a little more realistic. It's good to know, uh, know the physics. So uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to create a normal map. So it's good to know what this is here um, and what we're gonna it's gonna kind of be like Snell's law in the sense that this normal mass is gonna kind of dir direct where this vector um, is gonna do and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna look up a space on the screen and display it in the bubble to make it look like it is refracting but it's, of course it's not but it's it's game so just it has to look good enough to look okay right and to be fun that's fun is the most important thing so by the way, everything you see here um, in this video is actually in a text form as well, and I'll put the link in the description. So you can pretty much just, if you don't really like watching videos or whatever, or maybe there's something here that you missed, um, maybe you can find it a little easier here in uh, the text form. But just obviously just ask me in the comment section below and I will answer whatever questions you might have. So I'll just assume you haven't created any of these graphics. So it's, it's you know, if you really want to know how to do this, it's you know, pretty easy. So first open up Inkscape. Okay. And you can uh, make a circle. And I'm holding the control and shift when I drag here. You can push F1 and move it around. And I usually will pick something kind of neutral, so. Let's see here, for a background, maybe I'll do a square, create that as a gray or something, push page down to go behind it. Now this I already had set up, uh, it looks like it has my settings from before, so you might want to change those settings, it's pretty big, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, stroke around there. So if you look here, let's see here, stroke style, it's 10 millimeters. I have it on there and you can see that white stroke around there. And you can push shift and uh, select any color here to choose the color of the stroke. And we want to probably have white because it's a bubble. And then I'm going to uh, push just without shift the X and there's no color in the middle. Then what you're going to do is going to push uh, control D to duplicate. Duplicate here. And we'll go to instead of a stroke, you'll pick fill, and uh, this is the radial gradient. So it gives you a nice kind of flesh to the the bubble. It gives you like sort of like a like an ambient texture. You kind of think of it that way. And then I'm gonna select no stroke on this one. Not that it really matters, but there that's what kind of looks like. And then I usually drop a little highlight or something, so and I'll push control, make it be a perfect circle. Let's see how that looks, and you know, maybe something like that, whatever. Uh, sure. And then we'll just kind of group everything together. So let's see, sometimes I move it off a little ways just so I don't grab the back or I'll lock it or something. So I'll just grab that one, that one that one and you can push control Z and they'll go back to the same position 
and you'll still retain what you've selected. And then I just usually uh, go to group, so object group, and now what we can do is easily export it with uh, what's selected. So I'll just say export PNG, and we'll just say export as, and we'll just go ahead and pick where we had the project. So in my case, just here, and I already have the texture that I created. So we'll just call it a little something different. So let's see here. So uh, the projectile, I'll call it projectile because maybe we'll blow the bubble or something. And so we'll call it uh, bubble two, sure. And we don't need to be very high res. So let's see here. We could probably pick like 64 or so. Actually, you know, I'll just pick 32. That sounds like a better value. It's what I picked before. Um, so let's go ahead and export it and see what we got. So let's take a look here. Actually, we could probably just do it from the Godot. And we'll look at the raw textures, projectile. Bubble too, and that's what it looks like. So I usually like to have it not have the filtering for pixel style. So we'll just re-import it without any kind of filter, and it will look like this when you drop it in there. So you know, it it, it looks a little different than the other one. Not a big deal, but anyway, you can always change that. Now don't forget to save your document as something that makes sense. So we'll go ahead and save this. And I save the raw stuff that I'm not going to use in a game, like outside of the directory, um, that is going to be exported. So that saves a lot of extra effort later on. So let's see here. So we got uh, GBA, da, 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 and right here, and I'll put in graphics, and I already have one here, so whatever. It's uh, we call it bubble two. That way we can go back to it later and easily do what we want to do. So, okay, so now we want to make the normal map. So to make the normal map, we'll first have to make a height map. And from my experience, it's just easier to go with a, a brand new document. So we'll just go to new, okay. And we'll go ahead and create a black square. And hold the shift when you're dragging to make the perfect square it's proportional and this one has a border from our previous setting so we'll be sure to get rid of that border we don't want that so I would I just held shift and I clicked that color the X color means no color at all all right and then we're gonna duplicate this with control D and we're gonna select white so you can kind of see that's a white box and then what we'll do is we'll go to the coloring let's see here so fill and stroke that's the fill and we want radial gradient and it's already white so there you go and now we'll just make sure we have both selected what I like to do to make selection easier is I just like <laughs> drag the one out of the way so I can select the other one on the bottom and I select the other one then to control Z and it'll keep both selected and then you can align them easier so I just go to object group and there it's grouped and they're the same size yay all right and so now we, I like to export high resolution before. If you remember, we did uh, let's see a 32 by 32 for the uh, bubble graphics. I like to do yeah, like a few magnitudes higher than that. So like we'll do 128 by 128. I also like to stick to power as a two, just kind of old habit also. A lot of graphics cards prefer uh, power as a two uh, for the data set. So um, we'll go ahead and export as, we'll pick the location that's not in the Godot project directory, but in our overall project directory. So we don't want to export this stuff uh, when we export the game, right? This is just uh, our building files to create the export uh, assets for the game. So we'll call it bubble height map 2. Save that off. And then don't forget to export it. So, export, and let's just make sure that it's there, and there it is. 
Perfect. Now let's open it up with the GIMP. So we'll go open with GIMP. Okay. All right. So it looks pretty good. Okay, so we want to make sure that it lines up with the square pretty well. And you can see here it, it, the, the diffusion here to the color with that gradient looks like it hits pretty much the sides. That's what we want, and we want it to be perfectly square. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go to filters, map, normal map. And I had to install this plugin, so I can show you how to do that. And it's also going to be a link in the description below. And so what I, okay, so you can see here the normal map it created, you can barely see it. I, I don't know if this is going to really have much of an effect, um, but what I like to do is change the intensity to about 10. Okay, you can see a little bit more there. And then it's, it's kind of like a hard uh, drop off. So I like to kind of filter it. Um, so what I'll do is choose an appropriate filter, like nine by nine, okay. So you can see it kind of blends the, the colors there. And so these colors are representing like an actual 3D, uh, you can think of like an, a, uh, an arrow, it's a vector going off the surface. Um, it's not exactly uh, spherical looking, but it, it still will provide a good enough result. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save this off. Now we're going to save this in the actual Godot project directory though, um, because this is an asset we're actually going to use in the game. Uh, not just to build the assets that are going to run on the game. So. We're gonna go here to raw textures and to projectile. And actually, wait, this is just to save it. Let's go ahead and save this first outside the directory. Okay. Uh, we'll call it normal map two. And then what I meant to say is export. Here we go, export. Now we're gonna export this to the Godot project directory because this the normal map will be used in the project and we'll call it two since we already have one from before and these defaults are usually fine so we'll just keep it as is so let's see what it looks like in Godot okay oh, here it is perfect all right, guys, that's it for the first part of this tutorial on how to create all the assets. And the next, we'll show how to do all these cool effects in the Godot game engine.